Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we have uh, completed the computer network series. In my last videos, like about 20 videos which I have posted before, I think most of them are like at most of 20 minutes. And if you go through those 20 minutes videos and then just go through the coursework that I have shared a link to, I think that should be more than sufficient for you guys to have an idea about how computer networking works. Okay, uh, by just, you know, in this way, if you could just like put it down on your resume that, you know, you have uh, the knowledge of all these protocols and this should help you get interviews for fresher roles for a network engineer or for someone like a site reliability engineer someone who works in data centers or someone who is who has some experience in coding and operating systems they also know about the protocol they should be able to get a job as a software developer in one of the you know uh, cloud cloud based companies or companies which have physical networks like cisco routers like you know cisco juniper arista hp and all of that so Let's just quickly go through the things we have learned and you know, um, so in layer five, okay. So as I mentioned before, OSI has five layers, uh, in the software stack. So it's basically the software stack. So first layer is basically the physical medium. So we'll not talk about it. Uh, in the layer five, we have learned about, uh, the HTTP protocol, the DNS protocol and the DHCP protocol. I think these three protocols are more than sufficient. You can also read about maybe FTP and you know, the mail protocol that should be enough layer four, very important concept, TCP and UDP. You know, if you want to uh, get a good grip on computer networks, these two protocols are extremely important, especially TCP. Okay. Layer three protocols, BGP and OSPF. These are the two routing protocols, which you have learned about. Okay. So, there are more resources to it. You know, if you want to get in depth into this and I've shared links with you already, uh, please go through it. If not the videos I have put up, I think that should be sufficient to have like a basic understanding of how these routing protocols work. This should be enough for you to clear, you know, the grounds for a fresher to join uh, a company. If you want to get into a mid mid role or something, you know, a senior engineer role, then you probably need more expertise. You need to have hands on experience. So I, I suggest, you know, uh, go through the videos, which has the configurations and which does all the show commands and everything in the links I've shared. So that should be enough layer two. Again, we have our protocol. We have the STP, we have the RSTP. Uh, we have learned about VLANs, you know, Ethernet. Okay. So some other protocols, what we have learned layer 2.5 has MPLS, which is used in the traditional ISPs routing network. Okay. It's a label lookup. We have talked about, uh, VXLAN, which is a tunneling protocol. Okay. Uh, I've, I've. This was the last video, so I've like mentioned about the basics of it. I've given you an introduction on how VXLAN works, how encapsulation and decapsulation happens. We will see more about it when we actually do, you know, uh, read about the virtualization topics, uh, especially after the operating system, which will be our next series. Okay. So I think, okay. We have also talked about NAT protocol. Okay. NAT, we can keep it in over here layer three when it sends the packet out, uh, from, you know, the local gateway router to the public internet. Uh, we have also talked about subnetting, which is again, a very basic topic and a very important topic. So please do go through, uh, subnetting. Okay. And these protocols are more than enough for you to get a good knowledge of how the routing and the switching works. Okay. How layer two and layer three routing works, how protocols work, how you are able to like, you know, log on to a particular device and, you know, uh, send a packet or communicate with someone who is in a different part of the world. Okay. So if you want to like, you know, 
do a little more uh, in-depth analysis of all these protocols, I would suggest uh, watch my uh, routing video on the how the routing and ARP protocol works. Okay, so basically all you have to do is, you know, you have to trace the packet. Okay, um, take a particular topology. Okay, you know, uh, configure the routers and switches with the respective IP addresses. Make sure you have all the default and static routes configured. Okay, do an ICMP ping. ICMP is again one more important protocol, which is nothing but a ping. Okay, ICMP protocol. Okay, let's say I have a host one over here. Okay, then I have a switch over here. I have host two over here. Then there is a router over here. There's another router over here. There's another router over here. And there is my switch over here. And I have host three over here. This is my switch B. And this IP address is 116.1.1.2. And this IP is 15.1.1.1. One okay, so now host one needs to communicate between host one and host three. Have to communicate with each other. So see how the packet. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to give a ping over here. Ping uh, sixteen dot one dot one dot two. Okay, once you give a ping on host one. Okay, let's say host one is a VM. Okay, it's a VM. Let's say I have a hypervisor. I have spawned so many VMs. I have uh, I have physical routers in between. Okay, I'm trying to ping from 15.1.1.1 to 16.1.1.2. So this is the command I would give. This would run the ICMP protocol. Okay, now what will happen is first it will check for the MAC address table. It will check if it has the MAC address. If not, it will initiate the ARP protocol. Okay, so ARP protocol, ARP request and ARP response is what the package that will go out of host one and it will receive the ARP response. So you can use a TCP dump command on host one to see like what all packets are going in and what all packets are coming out of this interface. Okay. So that's how you can trace the packet. Okay. You will learn the MAC address. You can run TCP dump over here. Also, you can see the ARP response coming from this device. You can check the MAC address table over here, the ARP address table over here. Okay. And like that, you can, you know, trace the packet going from here to R1 from host one to R1. And then you can have routing over here. So let's say this is, 10.1.1.0.24 network. You can configure these two interfaces. Okay, once you configure these two interfaces, make sure you have a static route or something which you know, or just see, you can just, you know what, what you can do is ping from R1's interface to R2's interface and see that, you know, this is able to ping each other. They're able to communicate between these two direct connected links. Okay, then similarly, you have another subnet over here. Make sure this is able to communicate, make sure this is able to ping over here. Make sure this is host one is able to ping to R1. Okay. If all these things work right between these devices, that means your routing is set up correctly and host one should be able to ping host three. Okay. So what this exercise will teach you is it will teach you how to configure using show commands. You'll be able to see how the configuration has been applied. Okay using some of the debuggability commands like TCP dump and all will help you debug how the packet is going on and how the packet is coming in. If there is an issue somewhere in the routing, right, you will be able to see where the packet is reaching and where it is getting dropped. And then you'll have to figure out the reason why, where it is getting dropped. Okay. So always the first thing, right, will be config. Okay. Each router, each switch from Cisco, Juniper, Arista will have its own configurations for its own protocols. Okay. So all these configurations should, you should be able to find online. Then there'll be show commands to verify these configurations have gone through. Okay, there'll be routing tables, there'll be ARP tables, there'll be MAC address show commands. All these tables can be seen using show commands and you should be able to verify that the configurations have gone through properly. Okay, that's the second step. So first is config, second is show commands, third is debuggability. Okay, then how do you debug? Okay, you use TCP dump commands, you use show commands and there are also logs you can enable, okay, to check if there is any errors. So as a fresher, these are some of the, some 
of the questions they can ask you like how you would debug an issue over here right so you first check the config you first then show the show commands then you debug how do you debug you do tcp dump you do check the logs you see where the packet is getting dropped at that point try to isolate the problem and see what's the solution for it okay i'll share a link with you guys to you know i think i've already shared a link on this on tracing the packet if you go through that link you should be able to you know trace the packet how the packet is going uh there's also called as a cisco packet tracer okay uh so what you can do is download this software just log on to a http device and see the http response and http request packets this is another uh thing you can do to just get a hands on experience of how the packet looks like you know what are the things they encode what is the response you get how does it look like and this can help you in um uh, coming up to speed with you know how the configuration is done how the show commands are done how the debug debugability works so this is what most of the network engineering jobs will require okay as a software developer when you have an issue you first need to do the same exact thing config show commands debugability you need to debug where the problem is wherever you find the problem that's the part which you have to fix it could be either the configuration is missing it could be that some protocol is misconfigured or something is not configured or some route is not present or it could be a software issue if it's a software issue then you go to that part of the code which does this particular uh, configuration and you check in the code where some, if some if there something is wrong in there okay so this this helps you in like you know covering like uh the sre roles the network engineering roles the software developer roles so having this much knowledge should be more than sufficient for you guys to like get into this particular field uh if you can dedicate 1 hour and go through the 20 minute videos and then spend some 30 minutes in just going through the documents which i have shared uh i think it should be more than sufficient and this concludes our computer network series okay so now we're going to move on to uh operating systems we're going to talk about the different components of an operating systems how they work then we are going to talk about virtualization virtualization is where you know we are going to be combining both operating systems and some of the networking concepts uh i hope we can I, i'll probably talk more about vxlan over there i'll talk about a little more about routing and all over there okay and so after operating systems which is going to be our next series so i'll start uploading videos on that from next week onwards and then after once we are done with operating systems then we'll go to virtualization once we are done with virtualization then we will uh probably go through uh the aiml course what we have talked about and then probably do the system design at the end okay and yeah so i hope i, I hope you guys take this weekend to revise to go through all the videos once and probably like you know get up to speed on computer networks and just get uh you know um the basic understanding of how it how these protocols uh contribute in working of the internet if you guys have any questions do let me know in the comment sections uh please like share and subscribe thank you guys